now that we have understanding of the value of this and how it differs between a function and a method call let's try to get some proof or some backing of the same concept from the ECMAScript language specification so we'll start with this section called evaluate call so this is how the language specification looks like and this is a section we are initially interested in called evaluate call so this is what is going to describe the behavior of a function or a method call so at this point we have still not differentiated between the two so let's look at what argument or parameter it gets the first part is func so func is the resolved function object so if you have foo dot bar it's going to resolve the value of bar within foo and hopefully return actual function ref is what talks about whatever you have written in your code so the syntax of it if you have written foo dot bar this is actually object which says that the base is something called a foo and the property we are trying to look up within that is bar and the base is going to be actual object the property you are looking for is like a string that we are searching within it but if it is a normal direct function call so if you are calling let's say fn directly your base is going to be a environment record so environment record is like whatever value variable is defined within a scope so you might think of environment record as you know close to a scope and the property that we're going to look within that is fn so these are the two inputs that we are mostly interested in there are a few other things like the arguments and some tail position which is used for optimization but these are the two we are going to mostly look at so it says that if type ref is a reference I think in both function and method call ref is going to be a reference so let's go within that it says that if it is a property reference okay so between a function and a method call it seems like a method might be like a property reference because you're trying to access a property then it says that this value equal to get this value of ref okay so ref contains these two sections foo and the string bar so somehow from these two values we should be able to get what is the this value we should send inside the function so let's look at what a property reference is just to clarify that this is a uh, this is filtering down just to method calls or how is it so it says that if the base value component of v so v is food or bar so the base value is like foo which is an object or it let's see what it can be so it says that if the base is either an object so foo can be that object or if it is a primitive value so we can look within has primitive base but it's also understandable it's basically saying that the base value of foo bar should be a boolean string symbol or like any one of these then only return true so if your base is either an object or a primitive then return true or else false so basically if it is a method call then this part returns true and in case of a method call it says this value equal to get this value of ref let's see what that does so this is a definition of get this value so it says if it is a super reference then treat it slightly differently but i think in most cases it's not going to be a super reference so in most cases it's going to get into this part which says whatever is the get base of the reference so it will return the base value component which means again that the whole thing returns the base value foo so in this case in case in case of a method call this value is equal to foo what is the other case so hopefully it is going to talk about what happens in case of a function call so yeah it pretty much it says that okay assert that the base is an environment record so assertion is like it's just going to make sure that it is what it expects it to be if it is not then it's usually going to throw some kind of error so it makes sure that the ref uh, the base is an environment record so it's like related to a scope if it is then get base of ref which is stored in ref env 
so this is again basically getting a reference to the environment record and then it says that this value equal to ref env dot with base object so let's look at what that means what does it mean to get the base object of our environment record actually if we go into the definition of environment records it contains a few abstract methods okay so abstract methods are like things which are defined within the language for easier definitions and easier reuse of the logic but these are not opened up to the javascript implementation so you cannot call this method from your code in any way so okay this is the thing we are looking for called with base object so it says that the environment record is associated with a with statement then return the with object otherwise return undefined so again it talks about the edge case where if uh, you know the, your out, outer scope is created by a with statement so using a with statement you can actually like add an extra scope sort of a thing so all of your free variables will get resolved from that with object instead of the actual scoping so anyway uh, in most cases it's actually going to return undefined so if we go back this value here is going to be undefined in case of a normal function call so again it says else this value equal to undefined so if it is neither of these cases it's again undefined so at this point we know this value is either the base for methods or undefined for functions so we're going to again skip a few things and end up here okay so now it says that result is equal to calling this call operator so this call is an abstract method which is defined on various kind of functions so we'll go into that and we are going to get the function and the this value that we have figured out till here that's going to go as input here so if we go into call it says that the abstract operation call is actually going to reuse whatever call internal method is defined within the function object okay so the idea here is that it's another level of abstraction so there can be multiple kinds of function okay so we'll go through what all those are but it's basically going to redirect to the internal call method of that specific type of function so if we can look at the logic here it ensures that the thing is a callable so callable is a very simple check it will check if it actually has a call internal method or not if it has a call internal method just call that by passing the this and arguments so now this call method definition is going to be different for different kinds of function so i'm going to cheat a little bit here and use this link i have and end up here so what it actually says is that in case of ecmascript function objects which is like the normal kind of function that we use that you can define with the function keyword those are function objects then this is a de definition for call but it can be actually different for other kinds of function so other kind of function means it can be a bound function so bound function is created when you bind a function to a particular this so the implementation for call there might be a little bit different so we'll look into why that is like uh, if it is different how, how is it like different or uh, does that solve our problem but in this case we're going to look at what happens in case of other kinds of function so other than normal function bound function you can also use proxies the so proxies calls can also define their own uh, call method but I think we'll ignore that uh, for now. So, okay, in case of a function call internal method, these are the things that happen. But before that, let's actually do a little bit something, which is we go up and look at a particular property, a particular internal slot within the function object, which is called this mode. So this is going to be important later down the path. So every function has this internal value called this mode and its value can be either of these three things strict global or lexical so strict we can already sort of understand right 
So if your code is in strict mode and it looks like a normal function definition, then your this mode is strict. And let's look at what it says on the right for strict. It says that if it is a strict mode, then this value is used exactly as provided. So what that means is whatever this value we have figured out till now, that is the exact value which is going to be internally used to call the function which means it's fine right if it is strict mode whatever you have found till now will work what about the global mode so javascript also has that non-strict mode right we talked about this where if it is a non-strict mode then this if it is undefined then it it's actually replaced by the global object so in case of non-strict mode that this mode value is set to global and it says right here that if it is a global then this value of undefined is interpreted as a reference to the global object so effectively if this value is undefined then it's going to be replaced by the global object that's in case of non-strict mode but there is another possibility of the this mode and this is interesting it says that if this mode is lexical then this refers to the this value of a lexically enclosing function so what is actually saying is whatever this value we have found till now is going to be ignored if the this mode is lexical and instead this is going to be resolved from the outer enclosing lexical scope so basically it means that it will be resolved from the outer function which has its own this so this is actually in case of arrow functions so in case of arrow function it doesn't matter whatever this we have resolved or what we are going to provide inside the arrow function it's always going to get its this value from the outer function scope outer let's just say um, you know, normal function scope so these are the possible uh, three this modes so this is going to be actually used in this call section so if we look at that it has this step called ordinary call bind this so in case of an ordinary call it's finding out that this or something so again it's go in here and this is again the important part if this argument is undefined or null okay so i missed one part so if this mode is strict then let this value be this argument so basically if it's saying that if it is strict use it as it is in other cases if this argument is undefined or null then um, okay so then basically it is going to find out what is the global this what is the uh, global object so these all steps are just used to find out the actual global object and that is going to set uh, to be the this value and i think somewhere it's going to be talk about talking about lexical no okay so here it is if it is lexical just return normal completion undefined okay uh -huh. so i got like a vague idea at this point so what this means is that um if it actually returns from here which is the case for lexical scope then that means that we are not actually going to pass you know any this to the function uh, the function scope doesn't have any this that was like inserted into it okay so because uh, that that scope of the function doesn't have a explicit this it works just like how your normal scope resolution works which means that it's going to look at the outer scope okay i think that's why it's returning in that case but in the other cases it's actually taking the environment record for that function so sort of the scope for that function and adding a this value 
which we have found till now okay so got it so three cases right mm, in case of lexical you actually don't add this to that function scope in case of strict mode use whatever this argument was provide and bind that to the function scope and if the this argument was undefined or null in a non strict mode then you actually bind that uh, you know bind this value to uh, the global object okay so this is how uh, these three cases are handled and now because your function scope has a this uh, if any of the code uses this dot anything uh, it's going to actually resolve from that you know correct object or uh, uh, you know if it is a global it's going to resolve from there but if it's undefined or null then um, it's going to give you an error right if you try to access something uh, within that so that's mostly it uh, for a normal function right so we already have a potential solution to this problem of uh, passing method as a function because we have seen the lexical scope so if you use an arrow function that means that your this value is um is going to be always taken from the outer um lexical scope which i think in this case will be the object so it's going to work correctly is it no hmm okay so yeah it depends like if you are using it within within a, a class definition right then it's going to work but in the example that you showed in case of a normal object it's not going to work actually so it's go it's needed to have a outer lexical scope uh, which is the object value okay so anyway we have some potential solution which is the arrow function if we use it like correctly but other than that mm -mm -mm. so there is also the other option right you can bind a function to a particular this value so that even if you pass that method as a function it doesn't change so can you look at how that works so again i think we can find it here but i'm just going to take a shortcut which is that i'm going to skip to this section which describes the call of a uh, bound function okay so this says that it's an exotic object what that means is that it's like a little bit different from the uh, common object definitions so in this case uh, your bound function exotic object has a slightly different and also what looks like a slightly easier implementation so it says that let bound this be f dot bound this okay so any bound object has this internal slot called bound this in fact if we go up these are the internal slots for um, any bound function so every bound function has a bound this uh, this is going to contain so if you write something like uh, uh, let's say if you write something like bound fn equal to fn dot bind okay so then if you write fn dot bind and pass in some this value there that is going to be stored in this bound this slot so it says that the value that is always passed as this value when calling the wrapped function so whatever this value you passed on during binding that's going to get stored here it also stores other things like bound target function so we what is the original function that got uh, bound and whatever arguments you provide because uh, we sometimes use binding for currying, right? So you can also like pass in some arguments here, which you don't need to pass the next time. So again, the point being that bound this stores uh, this object that was passed in for binding initially. So now what it does is it takes this this value and basically whatever was passed as this argument, right? This thing that's not going to get used instead it is using this bound this that was initially provided and use that for calling the function so this is why whatever these we have resolved till now doesn't really matter for bound functions because you have already bound them to some value and that's the exact one which is going to get used so this is like another solution to this whole problem uh, 
you can use a bound method instead of like a normal method if you um, really want to make sure that uh, it works as a callback so i think those are the two cases uh, you can also define a bind uh, sorry uh, define a call implementation for your proxies but i think that's going to be a little bit complicated so i'll skip that for now but these are roughly the three solutions uh, you can use an arrow function or a bound function or a proxy if you uh, really want to make sure that uh, you know the behavior is what you expect it to be in the case of a method of course so if we go back uh, just to summarize our understanding from the specification um, the language has to find out that your function call looks like this where you know there is a left part so it's so your foo is supposed to be a, either an object or a primitive the right part of that so bar is supposed to be a string or a symbol so i think we haven't actually uh, explored this but in case of any reference and this is a property reference remember so in case of any reference um, your property can be either a string which is what we are accustomed to but it can also be a symbol so it can be like a inbuilt symbol like we have for iterators or it can be a custom symbol that you are using for uh, storing some value so if it can find out that whatever is being called has this general structure then it's going to use the implementation for methods now just to clarify let's look at a few examples um you know what all things are valid as a property reference and what all things are not very really valid so i'll go through them quickly i think we can zoom in a little bit okay so these all things are expected you can be either a string you can access it directly you can access using the uh, accessor object accessor like notation using these brackets you can use uh, any inbuilt symbol you can use any custom symbols here you can of course chain these calls right so if you chain it what it looks like to the language is that um, the object itself is this foo dot foo one and the property you're looking for is bar so your this is going to be actually set to foo dot foo one same thing you can access the property using a string um, now we saw that your left hand side the foo that can be an object but it can also be a primitive so you can also you know your uh, foo can also be like a string so it can be a variable containing a string or just the string uh, literal because these are not like um, it doesn't find out a property reference uh, statically it looks at the value during the runtime so again because these are two are prim primitives uh, that will work as expected um, interestingly you can also wrap your left hand side in a parenthesis and that would also work so uh, one thing i have seen is uh, and that's an interesting way of understanding what's a property reference or not is that think of anything which can be the left hand side of an assignment expression so i'll just write it down here okay so i can always assign some value to one two three right or whatever so this left hand side this is a reference okay but wh whatever is a valid value here which means that you can actually do this in an assignment operation and that actually works so the same thing will work in case of a property reference just that your left hand side has to have a base what i mean is that it should look if it looks like you are assigning something to a object property right then whatever is the left hand side is also a valid property reference so what that means is this object.abc that's also actually valid um, as a property reference if you are like calling it uh, it will be called as a method okay so what is not valid then so if you actually store that method in another variable and call it uh, indirectly then of course we saw that this is going to look like a function call the other part is let's say um, maybe if you are using this uh, I don't know what it's called but you basically uh, you know if you assign something to something else that actually returns the value here but it's not considered as if the left hand side is equal to foo dot bar 
it actually contains the value of food dot bar which is the function itself so this again doesn't look like a, a property reference same thing for other a uh, little bit of different expression but the point being is that you know again this left hand side right the easy way is can we assign some value to it so this is actually an invalid uh, assignment expression so if this looks like an invalid assignment expression uh, then it's also invalid property reference and the last part is of course because things are dynamic now your object part uh, can be created dynamically so it can be any value um, that gets resolved at the runtime so you can call create foo and get object as a return or you know this whole expression actually returns object or a, a primitive and that would work as expected so these are like some possible values of uh, what looks like a property reference and what doesn't so that's all um, I hope we have some idea of what looks like a method call uh, what looks like a function call and um, how the function call implementation is a little bit different for different kinds of function and um, how we can use to you know freeze the behavior that we really want so I think that's all uh, hopefully we have learned something new uh, it took me a lot of time to figure out all of this <laughs> uh, and I think the video still turned out to be quite long but I hope it was at least a little bit interesting because we got to see some of the uh, internal mechanisms of the language. Thank you.